I have the honor of closing this session, which has just been fantastic, I hope. Um, today I'm going to talk about a little bit about the state of the planet, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how GLF works in this situation. And I'm going to do it with two avocados. Um, about a month ago, I bought two avocados. I love these things. And uh, I ate one, then I ate another half, and a friend invited me for dinner. And um, things got the worst. You know, I didn't, I didn't go back to the avocado, and I had to throw away a half of it. Uh, I don't know about you. How many of you like avocado? How many of you have eaten avocado in the past two weeks? Well, we're not alone. Elizabeth's not alone. Avocado is a fruit, and it is, the demand for avocado is off the charts. It's booming all over the world. It's, uh, in in uh, Europe, we consume about 400,000 tons. It's increasing. Imports are increasing about 16% uh, a year. In China, it's increasing 250% a year. And you know what happens when things start increasing that fast in China. In New Zealand, it even set off a crime spree. Bandits are going into, uh, this, the, there's such a demand that bandits are going into orchards at night, filling up pickup trucks and selling them on the black market. So, avocados, it's booming all over the world. Where do they come from? In Europe, uh, they come from Kenya, Peru, Guatemala, and Mexico. Now, we're going to focus today on Mexico. Mexico is the world's largest producer of avocado. They produce about 50% of the world's uh, exports. It's a business worth $2.5 billion. It's overtaken tomato in uh, Mexico as the second largest exporter uh, earner. And oil is even more than oil in terms of value uh, uh, in currency reserves. Um, I'm going to check that figure, but it was very high. And most of these avocado come from a place called Misha Ocon, which is a central up in the highlands in central uh, Mexico. Um, with that kind of growth, and not only that, earlier this year, prices of avocado in this area went up, doubled, doubled in one month from the year before. They can't produce this fast enough. Well, that's a great thing. It, it employs 100,000, gives incomes to 100,000 households. And we all love it. It's organic. It's a superfood, except for there's some issues here. Last year, to grow avocado in, the, in Misha Okan state, they uh, deforested an area about 80 square kilometers. Now, that may not seem like much, but I'll come back to that. But the problem is also with avocado is it, uh, it, it consumes twice the amount of water that these natural far forests that they replaced. And it can affect the local reserves. There's, it, it takes in so much water that in the UK, they talk about that they have imported enough avocado to fill 10,000 Olympic swimming pools of water. That's an amazing figure to me. But why do we care about Mexico? Mexico is a beautiful country that's totally underestimated in terms of how beautiful it is. It contains 15 to 20 percent of the world's biodiversity. It also contains 10 mammals that are on the extinction list. It has 100 that are threatened in various ways. That doesn't mean they're facing extinction right now. Um, it also, this particular uh, area, is where the monarch butterfly biosphere reserve is. Right now it's not under threat, but the local ecologists, who are very good, are saying that if we're not careful, we could start to affect that beautiful historic site. But, and then you go back to, uh, and I don't know if you realize it, but we are now in, and well, I think most of you probably realize it, but maybe not people out there, that we are now in the uh, largest mass extinction since the dinosaurs. Um, and if the, our friends at IUCN, that are a member of GLF, say that if we continue in the way we're going, we could lose half the world's biodiversity in 45 years or so. Well, let's also talk about deforestation. 80 kilometers, that's not very much, but it's a piece of the picture of the global picture. Last year, according to the FAO, on 215, the latest forest assessment, we deforested an area of about net loss. This is very important. The net loss, because we, we was about four, about 4 million hectares. Um, in the tropics, which is very, very important to us, it was about 6 million hectares. The good news is the deforestation rate has definitely come down uh, by a tremendous amount since the 1990s, but if we continue, this is still too fast. And if we continue the way we are, if you talk to our friends at the IPCC that often come to GLF, uh, they'll say in 19 years we're going to hit the, the ceiling of the 2 degrees ceiling, which would be 
four degrees or something above uh, what it was pre-industrial. Um, okay, so we're doomed. But see, anyone at GLF, we don't think so. Uh, I know everyone here, we don't think so. We're optimists. I remember someone that came to one of our conferences said, optimism is a moral imperative. So what's the answer here? And that's the great thing is there's a lot of answers here. It turns out that there's a local indigenous group, Carpine, I might get it wrong. There's a local indigenous group there near the biosphere that's been growing organic avocado for over 300 years. They're very good at it. And uh, they have, um, they've now taken on in their lands that they've moved, they've stopped deforestation. They're moving avocado onto degraded farmer agriculture lands and onto agriculture lands. Uh, and not only that, they're rewarded with a price increase of about a third above the standard price if you use it through the more harmful ways. Um, we got everything we need. I was in a meeting this morning with the finance guys. Finance is one of our themes, innovative finance for sustainable development. And they said the big issue that all the banks have is there's nothing investable out there. Well, what could be more investable than this? Right? We have, we have a unlimited demand. We've got a price that's doubling. We've got smallholders. Most of, the, most of these farmers are, uh, have five to seven hectares. And they're all in a group in an association. Now, if we can't find a way to aggregate funds to get them into a large lending program, I don't know what else we can do. It's perfect. And we've got the knowledge of organic farming. There, ready. And we've got great local scientists. They've got fantastic policies in Mexico City working on this. The, the uh, attorney general's office involved with trying to stop deforestation. You've got everything on the ground. And this is GLF again. GLF has to connect. We have to connect the consumer with the producer. Now, only 8% of the current avocado in this area is produced um, organically. Only 8%, although you'd get a significant price increase if you did. So we need to, there's no organic certification program, but we have FFC and we have Fair Trade, and we have a lot of groups here that work with this area. There's also intercropping. By the way, we have ECRAF and others work on agroforestry. Intercropping is very successful with avocado in that area. There's lots of way, ways we can do this, but we've got to connect the consumer with the, with the producer. And the last thing we have to do is we have to change our own personal behavior. It always starts with us. Now, I threw away only 25% of my two avocado, but the reality is that we waste about a third, some people say more, of all the food we eat in Europe. A lot of that's lost in supply chains in the south, but in the north, we mainly throw it away. Now, I've been feeling guilty about it ever since I wrote this speech and ever since I thought about that half avocado I threw away. We, we can change. We can turn this around. Uh, we've got the knowledge. We've got the connections. We need to connect. We need to work with those local scientists. We need to work with those local communities. There's extension agents out there. We need to connect with all of us, and we need to change our own behavior. And we can, we can turn this thing around, and we can turn this movement into something that can change the world. Thank you so much. <laughs>